today evening we are going to uh, start uh, reflecting on the teaching of the uh, the four uh, teaching on the we say the Loto Namji uh, the four reminder uh, translated as the sometimes translated as the four reminders uh, uh, so, uh, from the practice of the preliminary uh, practices, and then comes under the uh, four ordinary foundations, uh, which uh, uh, which are uh, first um, the precious human life, the second impermanence, uh, third action cause and result, uh, karma cause and results, and then the fourth is the uh, shortcomings of the samsara. So these are the four uh, ordinary foundations. Now uh, these are the preliminary uh, practices. So here preliminary means uh, a practice which has to uh, go before any other practice. It is a, a kind of base foundation for all to be able to uh, proceed towards the path of enlightenment. Like supposing you build a house, in order to have a house, the foundation is most important. You know, people spend most time, most effort, uh, most everything while building the foundation. You know, so uh, once the foundation is uh, strong, once the foundation is laid well, and then one can uh, start building quickly on top of that. But till the foundation is uh, laid well, then one spends uh, enough time, effort uh, in uh, building a, a strong foundation. Uh, so uh, in no way it means foundation is uh, not important or is less important than the, uh, you know, the practice uh, which come after that. Uh, in a house, most important is foundation. You know, so foundation is not less important than the actual house that you see above the ground. You know, so foundation is a very important uh, part. Now, in the foundation practice also, then uh, the four reminders, as we say, Lodo Namji, so this is uh, very very important this is the most important uh, the four reminders the word reminder uh, I don't know how it was translated but uh, they say reminder so I guess supposed to be remembering all the time that's why they call it for reminder but Tibetan word is Lodo so which means turning one's mind away from ordinary uh, you know ordinary uh, outlook so what is an ordinary uh, you know outlook or ordinary thought we all beings irrespective of what kind or what religion you follow or what whether you follow any religion or not you know so uh, no matter what all beings we want happiness that is our only wish that is the most common uh, part of all beings you know whether you are uh, human whether you are animal you know uh, whether you are uh, of any kind of uh, follower of any religion or non-follower of any religion it is common you know that all of us look for this happiness uh, so that is the most uh, you know how do you say universal uh, in all beings. We all put in a lot of effort trying to achieve this. Uh, we do all kind of things. You know, we try all kind of possible things. Uh, whether we go to school, whether we do, you know, go to work, uh, whatever, you know, or whether even simple thing like sleeping in the night. So everything is uh, dedicated towards this. We think by having uh, external material uh, 
development we will be able to achieve uh, this happiness and we try uh, a lot uh, you know so uh, in in the world uh, you know uh, in the west led you know as an example you know you are most uh, advanced in uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know many things uh, so that way uh, you know we thought we would be able to uh, achieve happiness but somehow all of us still uh, unable to really achieve a complete happiness and still struggling to achieve so that is why all of us are here today trying to uh, you know uh, reflect on some uh, teachings or some methods through which trying to uh, develop some insight into how to uh, achieve this happiness i am not saying uh, you know the uh, things that we do uh, trying to achieve happiness is 100% uh, you know uh, no use you know we are able to achieve some kind of some level of happiness but it is a temporary uh, lasting happiness it doesn't last very long you know it's uh, if it was uh, everlasting then we would be free from all kind of uh, suffering but then uh, we all have all kind of uh, you know ups and downs in our life you know so uh, whatever we try uh, doesn't seem to give us uh, a permanent solution to uh, this happiness what we normally do is for example you know there's a uh, we have a house uh, with a you know roof uh, say a tin roof then uh, there you know when it rains very heavily and uh, there's a leakage in the roof and then water seeps into the room you know so what we normally do is uh, when the water is seeping in we are always cleaning the floor drying the floor all the time you know so that is what we do normally you know so uh, the water leakage is there our ground floor becomes wet we wipe it and then it's dry you know again after some time another droplet comes again we try to wipe so that's what we are doing all the time you know trying to overcome are suffering that way you know with uh, various kinds of uh, remedies all the time trying very hard so if we continue doing this all the time is never going to solve our solution you know our problem uh, in fact uh, we will uh, you know destroy the floor you know we will destroy whatever nice floor that we have uh, we might waste that by doing this this is because we are unable to remedy the real cause of this problem if we want to truly solve this problem then we have to look at the cause of the problem the main cause of this problem we have to turn away from just uh, trying to solve a problem temporarily by just uh, you know kind of wiping the floor but look into the true problem and which is you know the leakage in the roof you know so when we recognize that leakage and if we go and uh, block that leakage on the roof then the problem is solved you know then no more uh, no more leakage you don't have to uh, you know try and wipe the floor all the time you know you are solved of the problem you know for once and for all so we need to look at the root cause of this problem so in life also to be free of suffering then we need to tackle and try to solve the main cause of the problem you know not just a temporary solution to these problems but the main cause of these sufferings then if we are able to uh, recognize them and try to uh, you know then overcome these then we will be able to achieve the true happiness the lasting happiness now in life we experience uh, many uh, situations uh, many experiences and these come about not from nowhere you know it doesn't happen from nowhere 
it comes about with uh, cause and conditions you know everything has some uh, somewhere to uh, begin you know uh, or some reason for it to happen you know so uh, cause and conditions everything has nothing appears from nowhere you know from blue sky nothing appears just like that you know everything has cause and conditions so our experiences happy experiences have cause and conditions our sufferings or bad experiences also have cause and conditions and uh, we uh, create a habit habits you know habitual pattern uh, through which uh, then one uh, creates uh, many uh, cause conditions and uh, these cause and conditions uh, again and again you know so create habit in us you know so we create a uh, habit we say habitual pattern uh, in buddhist of course we believe in uh, you know uh, lifetimes in the past and future so we say you know in many lifetimes in the past we have been creating so many uh, you know these habitual patterns and through these habitual patterns we create habits and then through these habits then we perform actions you know so uh, lots of uh, uh, you know habits create which create suffering which are negative habits you know so negative habits then create negative pattern and negative uh, cause and conditions so through these negative cause and conditions then we experience uh, negative or suffering you know? so same way uh, positive cause and conditions create uh, positive uh, experience or happiness you know so that way uh, we say and uh, those who don't believe in uh, past lifetimes also uh, you can experience this lifetime only you know even in our this lifetime we create habit you know and through these habits then we experience whatever uh, various experiences that we go through so now trying to uh, recognize what are these negative habits uh, what happens through the negative habits why should we uh, you know uh, turn away from the negative habits uh, and uh, how can we turn away from these negative habits uh, you know what is the base that we have that we can turn away from these negative habits you know so all these you know so this is you know turning away from the negative uh, aspects or suffering and turning towards uh, happiness you know the path to happiness or achieving of happiness you know so this is uh, the uh, four reminders for the uh, lodo namji so you turn lodo means the mind turning away from uh, you know the uh, the things which create uh, suffering which bring about suffering so now uh, how many of you already uh, practicing uh, the uh, wonder, you know, familiar, familiar with the practice. Okay. Practicing wonder, sometimes comes very late. Some new. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, then uh, uh, you know, so to those who are new, then uh, you will understand now, and to those who already know, then you reflect on. You know what is uh, you know so you, what you already know then you reflect on that mm, so now so that is why we have these uh, in the four uh, reminders uh, so uh, first as I said then we have to know that uh, you know we have the base uh, on which we can achieve this if we don't have the base then uh, you know it is uh, no matter what we try we would not be able to achieve you know but because we have a base then we can achieve so it is important to first recognize and 100% uh, aware of the base then we know we can achieve you know so the first is the uh, precious human life so that is the base mm -hmm. so uh, here uh, it says that uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. so one uh, recognizes the uh, precious uh, human life so uh, one recognizes that one has uh, been able to uh, you know achieve uh, this precious human life 
So, of course, we know, you know, we are humans, isn't it? We all know this. Uh, so, we have to examine now, you know, what kind of human life is this that we have achieved? You know, so, uh, whether it is precious or not. You know, so, uh, we are trying to examine and understand whether it is precious or not. What is the meaning of precious human life? What is precious human life? And what is an ordinary human life? Any human life? Is there a thing called precious human life? And is there a thing called ordinary human life? You know, so we are trying to examine this. So uh, it says, you know, if a, a human life uh, has certain uh, qualities, uh, then it can be uh, understood as precious human life. Uh, because uh, through those uh, conditions, then one would be able to achieve this uh, uh, perfect uh, happiness. Uh, so, not just uh, temporary happiness, but perfect happiness. So, therefore, uh, then uh, a life which, is, which has the capability to do that, uh, then it is uh, a precious human life. So it is more precious than just uh, a precious uh, gem like diamond, you know. A diamond, they say, is the best friend of what? Women. <laughs> so even uh, men have, you know, uh, many things, you know. So, uh, so, but all those kind of precious things uh, are kind of gives us some kind of, uh, uh, how do you say, happiness. But that happiness itself changes again. You know, the minute you have a diamond, then you need insurance for that. You know, then you need to have a nice place to keep. And uh, otherwise, a uh, big problem, you know. So, uh, and uh, for men, uh, you have a nice car, and then that's another problem. You know, then you need uh, many things after that. You know, so, uh, so like that. You know, so these kind of uh, things uh, somehow is able to give you uh, some level of uh, happiness, but it is very short-lasting uh, happiness. And that happiness itself uh, changes, you know, changes to uh, further uh, uh, complications. So therefore, it is not a really uh, true lasting happiness. So now, uh, so uh, human life which can achieve the uh, real lasting happiness and then has uh, 18 uh, qualities. So we call these 18 uh, qualities, you know, Thalwa, uh, J, Jorwa, Chu. Uh, so uh, I think, uh, you know, the uh, favorable uh, conditions, you know, 18 favorable conditions uh, one uh, has, you know, one uh, life has, human life has. So through that, then uh, one can say a life is a precious human life. So now, uh, first of which is, uh, you know, uh, not being born in the hell realm. So it is sometimes difficult for people to contemplate about uh, hell and, you know, all this. You know, they somehow uh, say that I cannot, you know, see hell. So how do I know it's there or not? You know, so, uh, but that is a very, uh, you know, kind of, uh, how do you say, uh, very uh, narrow way of judging something, you know, because uh, just because one cannot see doesn't mean it is not there. You know, we cannot see people in the other side of the world and we cannot uh, think that it is not there. You know, in the past uh, uh, many hundreds of years back, uh, when they had no, uh, you know, uh, internet when when they had no uh, machines like aeroplane and all these uh, where people uh, could not communicate with each other could not travel and then uh, you could not uh, you know uh, see or hear of people on the other side of the world uh, and they thought they were the only ones but uh, uh, it wasn't so you know uh, on the other side of the world also there were people you know maybe looking a little bit different uh, but uh, uh, there were people you know, so just because one cannot see or hear does not mean it is not there. You know, so one who has been there will know it is there, isn't it? So and that way we cannot uh, come to a conclusion or fix our mind to saying that there is nothing as hell or, you know, or, or other beings or other realms. 
so so now uh, then also uh, you know one uh, experiences uh, one you know according to one's own uh, as i said uh, cause and conditions created uh, you know self creation of certain cause and conditions and then one experiences uh, such so for example beings in the hell realm experience uh, you know so called hell realm experience because of one's uh, you know creation of certain cause and conditions to experience that kind of uh, uh, experience i don't think uh, you know hell is a place and somebody sitting out there and doesn't like you will throw you into somewhere so called hell where you have to uh, suffer or somebody out there is very happy with you and then uh, you know uh, throws you up into something called heaven uh, where you experience great happiness you know so i don't think that way you know we are responsible for our own uh, experiences as i said we create uh, the cause and conditions uh, through which we experience the result so that way uh, whether it's heaven or whether it's hell uh, one experiences that through one's own uh, creation of the cause and condition again example you know a very simple if it's difficult to understand is very simple i think you know because uh, say for example a person like we say in the hell realm you know they suffer these beings who are born in the hell realm have great suffering such as extreme heat or extreme cold you know so they experience uh, you know they suffer through such uh, but uh, so one can again uh, you know some people have difficult to understand this you know uh, then one can uh, you know kind of uh, even experience in this life you know in this life also like for example if we have you know very strong uh, you know anger or you know hatred then uh, even in this uh, place even if you have everything you know you have a nice place to stay you have good food to eat you have a nice family uh, you know you have nice friends around everything but you will not be able to appreciate or experience the goodness of all that you know because of your this strong uh, negative uh, you know uh, emotion such as hatred or anger then through that you know you will have you know you will see everything very negative you know you will not be able to experience anything good you know other people the same thing will experience very nice you know it is something that everybody cherish but you even having that you will not be able to experience the good part of that you will see all the negative part of that you will you know feel all the negative uh, effect of that you know so uh, everything depends on one's condition you know condition of the mind like uh, you know nowadays there's so many uh, how do you say uh, you know uh, in america and in these places where people uh, go have to go into the war you know and have a war you know fighting and need to kill many people and like this then after even after they finish in that phase then they mentally you know they suffer a lot you know so they become uh, you know uh, uh not well you know mentally not well they experience a lot of uh, suffering you know so so like that you know so so that way and then if one uh, creates uh, extreme uh, you know extreme uh, conditions of uh, you know uh, negative extreme negative and then one experiences a uh, Uh, you know one goes through experiences uh, such as the hell realm uh, and uh, those beings who experience that we uh, say you know they are born in the hell you know so hell realm you know so that is how uh, came about so very much possible you know so it is not something uh, not possible uh, so now we have to uh, we are examining ourselves you know whether we have the precious human life uh, so we are examining whether we are born in the hell realm you know so we are pretty sure we are not born there isn't it so hell realm means extreme heat and cold 
uh, we have little bit of uh, you know fluctuation in the temperature we need air condition we need uh, you know uh, central heating we have all those you know so uh, i don't think we are born in the hell realm you know we are definitely not suffering of extreme heat and uh, extreme cold and i don't think we can take it also you know a little bit of heat or cold uh, we make so much uh, fuss and then we remedy that with everything you know so uh, yeah i don't think definitely we are not born in the hell run then the second is uh, we say the hungry ghost realm so in the hungry ghost realm the beings of that realm have great suffering of hunger you know uh, hunger means uh, you know uh, lack of uh, contentment you know they uh, they are always suffering you know of uh, uh, such and uh, it is said that beings there have great suffering out of hunger and thirst you know uh, some sufferings as hunger great hunger and thirst and even if they are able to uh, have uh, you know get something to overcome that they are unable to consume that uh, for their uh, benefit so therefore uh, you know have great suffering so this also uh, is in the same way you know very much uh, possible for us to imagine you know so uh, even uh, in the uh, human realm uh, people uh, some people have uh, you know everything but uh, you know uh, mentally uh, they are never satisfied and they are the most poor people you know they they think they have nothing you know no matter how much they have they think they don't have enough you know so they are, you know they suffer so much that way you know but uh, so that way again you know in the very much possible beings of the hungry ghost realm that way you know so uh, beings of such uh, you know uh, uh, faculty uh, who have uh, created such uh, karma you know so experience uh, such extreme uh, uh, feelings or extreme suffering then uh, so we are not that way isn't it we are uh, we don't have that kind of we are not born in such a hungry ghost realm you know so we are free of that kind of uh, defect now the uh, third uh, is uh, you know that we are not born in the uh, realm of the animal so this is quite easy to understand because we all know what is animal isn't it we can see them and we can uh, you know we have experience with them and so we understand what is animal and we are definitely sure we are not born as animals of course we call ourselves humans also animals but here we are talking about those animals who we normally associate and call animals you know uh, animals uh, like yourself as i said you know have this wish to be happy you know uh, uh, wish to be free from suffering 100% same as you you know it's not that they have less wish to be happy and more wish to be suffering uh, and you have uh, you know more wish to be happy less wish to be suffering so nothing like that you know equally same 100% they also have the same you know want to be happy as you and uh, wish not to be suffering as you 100% same but unfortunately uh, you know they don't have the capability which you have you know through which one can uh, try and achieve that uh, they are unable to express you know they are unable to speak and express what they want you know so that is one of their uh, suffering uh, they are uh, used by others you know like humans uh, but uh, they don't have the intelligence to overcome that you know so those are uh, like their suffering now for example uh, you know uh, people nowadays the dog you know the husky husky is a dog from the uh, cold area isn't it and uh, people in very hot areas uh, keep them nowadays you know and then keep them like pet you know and then uh, they have no choice but to stay there you know if they are taken there you know so uh, that way you know they are unable to express you know they uh, you know they are not from that place they don't like the heat uh, you know i'm sure they suffer a lot in that kind of temperature but they are unable to uh, express they are unable to help themselves you know because they don't have uh, such capabilities uh, humans uh, rule over them 
you know, we take them where we want, uh, we put on them what we feel like putting them, you know, putting on them. We make all kind of shoes for uh, our pets, you know, cats and dogs have shoes, you know, these days. And, uh, uh, and not very comfortable, 100%, you know, because they are not used to that. You know, and then uh, uh, I've seen uh, some also, because of putting on these shoes, uh, they cannot walk properly later, you know, their legs have become crooked, you know, because unable to balance and unable to slipping and all like this. You know, so, uh, you know, they, they have lots of sufferings, you know, which uh, uh, we don't have such. Mm. And most of all, uh, they don't have intelligence like, you know, we have uh, through which uh, to be able to uh, create the cause and conditions, as I explained earlier, uh, to experience uh, happiness or to avoid the cause and conditions to experience suffering. You know, they don't have intelligence to uh, you know, examine or determine this. We humans, as I said, have capability of recognizing that, you know, cause and conditions, create good cause and conditions, we experience a good result or happiness. We create bad cause and condition, we experience suffering. So we don't want suffering, so we must create good cause and condition. So we try, we can do that. We must avoid bad cause and conditions, so we avoid that. And so we have this intelligence. But uh, animals don't have this. You know, so uh, if uh, a dog uh, sees a bird in front of it, it will, uh, you know, it is a playing thing for the dog. You know, it will jump on it and kill it. You know, so uh, so like this. You know, so they do, not because uh, they don't, you know, they want to hurt it, but they don't understand that. You know, so they don't have that intelligence. They have intelligence, but not uh, like humans. You know, uh, not like us. So that is one quality that we have. And we enjoy that as a human. Now, the next is, uh, you know, the uh, it is in English translated as barbarian. You know, so we are not born as barbarians. You know, so uh, here, uh, barbarians means uh, one who does not know what is good and bad. You know, so one is unable to judge that. Uh, the one who is unable to, as I said, uh, recognize, you know, what is good and what brings, you know, what is the result of good, you know, or happiness, you know, what is, of course, we all know happiness, and we want happiness, but how to achieve this happiness, and how to avoid suffering, so that is Dharma, actually, you know, Dharma is nothing more than that, you know, Dharma doesn't mean, uh, you know, something uh, that is, uh, you know, like uh, magic, or something that is uh, labeled so and so, so that is Dharma, you know, you are a Buddhist, you know, uh, so you, you know, Buddhist Dharma, so that. So Dharma is not limited to that kind of understanding. I think that is very uh, superficial understanding of Dharma. You know, Dharma is actually uh, anything that is able to uh, give you true happiness. Uh, anything that is able to eradicate you know, suffering completely. You know, so that is Dharma. You know, so, uh, so, uh, so then... Dharma is uh, precious, you know, for everybody because we want that to happen. You know, we want happiness. We don't want suffering. So, if we can achieve that, then that is really precious for us. You know, so that is why we say Dharma is so precious. You know, so so anything that is able to do that is Dharma. So uh, beings who are deprived of such, uh, you know, such path, uh, so uh, that is. You know, a barbarian. You know, one who doesn't uh, know what is right, what is wrong. One who, do, though they want to be happy, though they don't want to experience suffering, but they are unable to, uh, you know, uh, unable to uh, recognize or unable to uh, uh, educate themselves of this. So, if we examine ourselves, we are free of that kind of. Uh, uh, you know, defect. You know, we are definitely, uh, you know, uh, born in a place where uh, we understand what is right, what is wrong. You know, we have the Dharma which teaches us how to uh, get this, uh, uh, you know, uh, permanent happiness, how to avoid suffering. You know, so uh, we definitely uh, understand this, you know, and then we are trying to, uh, you know, understand this and uh, practice that. You know, so therefore, Therefore, we are not uh, you know, barbarians in that terms. Then, uh, then the 
uh, other defect is uh, we say you know the fifth is uh, uh, beings uh, who are very uh, powerful and who have lots of uh, you know kind of uh, how do you say uh, like gods you know we say the worldly gods so in the realm of worldly gods being born as a a worldly god so they have lots of power the wealth you know everything you know they have all kind of things so in that uh, but everything as i said is temporary you know uh, as i said uh, the uh, experience that we experience uh, in this relative world is temporary so same way you know uh, when our karma uh, you know exhausts or extinguishes of experiencing the happiness and then the next uh, you know it changes to suffering so same way even these gods you know they experience because of their uh, past karma accumulation of you know certain karma uh, then they experience great happiness great wealth great everything you know in that time period so when they have so much uh, you know uh, power so much happiness so much this kind of thing uh, they uh, lose track of what is reality you know and then uh, and then when suddenly that experiences finish and change then they have lots of sufferings you know unimaginable sufferings uh, for example even in you know a human you know humans uh, who are you know very rich and very powerful these people uh, their level of suffering is much more than uh, people like us you know when they change and you know, supposing if they are very powerful and suddenly they have no more power then they go through a lot of uh, you know uh, suffering well as we uh, from first don't have much too much power uh, so we don't have uh, too much to lose you know so little bit of here there we are able to adapt to it you know so uh, gods are much more than uh, humans you know so they experience a lot of mm, you know these kind of worldly powers so when it extinguishes then they have lots of sufferings so we don't have that you know we are not born as god we experience uh, happiness to a certain level we experience uh, suffering to a certain level so we know what is suffering you know so when uh, we experience certain suffering uh, we understand what is suffering and we try to adapt to it and we try to overcome those you know but uh, people who never experience that who never know about that suddenly when they experience then for them it is very difficult to overcome you know because don't, they are not prepared for that you know lots of suffering so we are not of that kind we don't face that kind of uh, you know defect or uh, that kind of uh, limitations hmm. then uh, the uh, sixth is uh, you know we are not uh, uh you know uh we are free from uh lokta lokta chain means those who have wrong view you know so we don't have wrong view wrong view means you know like uh, there's no uh, cause and condition you know it doesn't depend on those you know then there's no thing as bad no thing as good if you harm somebody it is not a negative action if you help somebody is not a positive action you know so we don't have that kind of wrong view we understand you know that uh, helping others doing good is good you know harming others is bad you know so bad if you do bad things we experience uh, you know uh, bad result if you do good things we experience good result you know so we believe in that you know, we understand that you know so that is the right view you know so we are free from a wrong view you know but there are many people who who are not, who don't have the capability of understanding that you know who have the wrong view you know they do many wrong things you know and then don't don't you know don't understand or you know that uh, uh, such actions harm so many people you know and uh, uh, bring so many sufferings to uh, so many people you know so they don't uh, uh, care about those things you know they only care about themselves you know and then um, of course we all trying to uh, do something uh, good uh, trying to achieve something uh, good for ourselves but they don't know how to do that you know and they do the things which create more sufferings for uh, others in turn so create more suffering for oneself you know so those are wrong views you know so we are free from that kind of uh, uh, shortcoming also you know we understand what is right we understand what is wrong that is why we are here you know trying to learn you know the dharma trying to you know develop Uh, loving kindness compassion you know trying to develop a good heart you know so uh, trying to practice 
you know, to develop as a, uh, you know, a human being from within, you know, develop wisdom from within, you know, trying to become a better human being from inside, you know, not only external. We understand that external material uh, wealth uh, doesn't seem to, uh, you know, uh, satisfy our needs all the time, you know, so we are trying to look inward, you know, and then develop inwardly, you know, that is why we are here, you know, so uh, we are free from such defect. Then the seventh is, uh, you know, we are born in a, uh, in a kind of a, a phase where, uh, uh, you know, an enlightened being like Buddha uh, came, you know, manifested, uh, attained enlightenment and taught the Dharma, you know, taught as I already told you what is Dharma, you know, so taught the Dharma and then through which uh, we have the means to achieve what, you know, he has achieved. You know, so therefore we have the uh, path, we have the Dharma. Uh, but there are, uh, you know, uh, there are times when no Buddha uh, manifests, you know, when no uh, enlightened beings manifest to uh, benefit beings. You know, there are uh, times. Uh, so in such times, then beings who are born in such times have no uh, opportunity because they don't know what is Dharma. You know, then like. For example, uh, you know, so for those, then even they want the same thing. You know, the, as far as the wanting happiness is concerned, you know, as far as being wanting to be free from suffering is concerned, is the same. But they, they won't have the means of achieving that because the Dharma is not there. You know, so but uh, we are not born in that kind of a era or that kind of a uh, phase. You know, so therefore, we are free from that kind of defect or that kind of shortcoming. Then uh, the eighth uh, you know, the eighth uh, favorable condition is that uh, we are sound, you know, we are sound. So, uh, you know, we are not mentally uh, unsound. You know, so mentally if you are not sound, uh, then uh, even if the Dharma is there, even if, you know, somebody, uh, the Buddha manifests, uh, no matter what opportunity you have, you will not be able to, uh, you know, take advantage of that because you are mentally unwell you know so you cannot uh, do anything you know but uh, here we don't have that problem we are very much sound you know, so we understand you know we can receive the teaching we can practice the path uh, you know we know we are suffering we know we don't want to suffer we know we want happiness we know how to achieve this happiness so we have all this intelligence all this capability you know, so therefore we are not suffering from any uh, mental uh, you know shortcomings. So that is one, uh, you know, one of the advantages we have. So now, uh, so that way, and then these are the uh, eight uh, favorable conditions that we have, uh, and uh, uh, the eight unfavorable conditions that uh, we are not born into. You know, so these are the eight qualities that we have. So uh, if we check again one by one, uh, you know, we have all these favorable conditions. Now, uh, now there are further, uh, you know, uh, conditions uh, which uh, one must uh, try to avoid, uh, you know, in order to truly be able to be successful in one's path uh, to uh, recognizing this uh, complete uh, potential or the limitless potential, the enlightenment, uh, the everlasting happiness. Uh, you know, so whatever you call it, in order to achieve that, uh, then uh, there are, you know, some points uh, which uh, we must uh, try to overcome. Uh, the first one is, if one is completely, uh, you know, kind of uh, engrossed or engrossed or say overshadowed with one's negative uh, emotions, uh, then, uh, you know, uh, then uh, it is very difficult for one to uh, genuinely uh, practice the Dharma. Uh, so, uh, for example, negative emotions means like anger, jealousy, uh, you know, so uh, ego, uh, so like this, you know, etc. So these kind of uh, emotions. Then, uh, you know, so that is the first. So if one is completely, uh, you know, kind of overshadowed by that. So one... Uh, through practice, of course, in the later practices, then one ha tries to overcome those. So these are the points one must, as a mindful, uh, you know, uh, practitioner who's trying to achieve, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, 
uh, who is uh, trying to achieve uh, advancement or result in one's search for happiness, then uh, these uh, points uh, one must be careful and try to avoid. You know, so uh, so that is why these are shown here. So uh, second is uh, you know uh, one must try to avoid uh, being uh, contaminated by a bad friend. You know, so bad friend means, as I said, that um, one who has wrong views. You know, so because that is bad influence. You know, so one must try to avoid. And then uh, one must also uh, try to uh, develop uh, in a positive uh, uh, mind frame. Then one must uh, avoid being lazy. You know, so uh, lazy is uh, there's many uh, form of laziness. One laziness we all know. You know, it's uh, lazy to uh, practice, lazy to contemplate, lazy to you know do anything like that. And the other kind of laziness is uh, you know thinking you cannot do it. You know, so that is also one form of laziness. You know, so uh, no confidence in yourself. You know, thinking that I I'm not capable of doing it, or you know I cannot do it. So that is one form of laziness. So one must avoid that kind of laziness also, because we we are you know uh, we will see that we have all these qualities. So through all these qualities, we definitely can do it. You know, so it is not we cannot do it. You know, so only through those laziness we cannot do it. And then uh, another thing it says here is that uh, those who have created lots of negative uh, you know karma or conditions in the past. Then when that ripens, then one faces lots of obstacles, you know, all the time. Uh, you know, one wants to do good things, but always having obstacles, you know, so that kind of experience is then, uh, that is unfavorable experience. And then uh, recognizing those, uh, then trying to uh, create conditions to experience positive uh, and not, uh, you know, overcome these uh, negative, you know, so uh, that is one. Then the next is also somewhat related to that, because of one's such... Uh, uh, past karma and then born into you know uh, unfavorable conditions such as uh, you know the, such as being subject subjected to others uh, power you know so mm, nowadays uh, I'm not very sure in the past of course you know like uh, those who are subject to powerful you know uh, kings and family they have no right you know they have to do what they are told uh, you know they have no right to practice what they want to, you know, whatever uh, practice as in, you know, whatever they want to do, they don't have that freedom. And nowadays uh, we have, you know, so we have freedom of, you know, what we want to do. And then uh, next it says is, uh, you know, those who have a mind frame of, you know, like uh, practicing the Dharma just to uh, fill one's stomach, you know, so, or uh, afraid of, uh, you know, just uh, immediate uh, short-term consequences uh, so practicing the Dharma you know so that is uh, uh, too short uh, uh, you know uh, motivation to really carry through a big uh, achievement you know so therefore one must uh, free from such uh, limited uh, motivation and especially uh, those uh, you know this is very strongly to I think monks and nuns you know who are the uh, representation of the, uh, you know, who represent the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and then uh, people uh, believe in them. You know, so uh, you take advantage of that, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, try to make a living out of that. You know, and uh, not honestly or sincerely uh, wanting to benefit people. Then uh, you know, uh, that is a very big, uh, you know, uh, bad karma. You know, so one must uh, avoid that. It says. Then uh, next is uh, you know just uh, it says uh, mm, uh, those you know trying to practice the Dharma just for uh, you know kind of uh, a gain of material wealth or a gain of some name or fame you know so just for that much you know so those are also quite similar. So uh, so these are uh, you know certain uh, you know. Uh, certain uh, conditions that one must uh, examine and be free of. Then there are also like, uh, you know, one must uh, you know, have uh, contentment, build contentment, you know, not have too much uh, expectation of, you know, material, uh, you know, wealth and this and that, you know, so uh, practice of contentment 
very important and uh, to develop to become a gentle person you know uh, try to uh, not be a very uh, aggressive person you know in speech in action in uh, you know in uh, uh, mind you know so in all three aspects become try and be a gentle person then uh, you know to uh, to uh, contemplate and reflect on the uh, uh, you know the sufferings of the uh, you know the lower realms such as we you know spoke about the hell realm the hungry ghost realm animal realm you know so to reflect on them try to understand them uh, rather than dismissing them without believing in them you know so uh, so tr- you know trying to uh, develop insight into them uh, through uh, you know that kind of reflection then uh, you know to uh, to uh, contemplate and reflect on the uh, uh, you know the sufferings of the uh, you know the lower realms such as we you know spoke about the hell realm the hungry ghost realm animal realm you know so to reflect on them try to understand them uh, rather than dismissing them without believing in them you know so uh, so tr- you know trying to uh, develop insight into them uh, through uh, you know that kind of reflection so not having you know kind of blockage in your mind uh, with some kind of you know uh, short sight and then uh, you know to uh, recognize uh, the uh, shortcomings of negative action and uh, recognize the uh, advantages of good uh, you know good action uh, good karma so these are of course there you know talks many more but these are the few uh, things one uh, you know tries to you know kind of cultivate in oneself in order to become a, a successful uh, practitioner so uh, then of course there are uh, you know other uh, points also we said the uh, you know five uh, in the uh, individual uh, advantages that one experiences which one has already and then five uh, external uh, advantages which one uh, you know has from external you know others factor so five five ten so for example uh, uh, born as a, a human you know a precious human life you know or born as a human then uh, uh, born in a place where dharma exists then uh, uh, you know one has all the, you know one's faculties intact you know so then and then uh, one uh, you know uh, is uh, with the right view and then uh, Mm. and one has uh, you know faith in the dharma so uh, so these are the uh, you know five uh, how to say advantages that one enjoys through oneself you know through one's uh, k- uh, karma you know that one has been able to achieve this uh, which which is uh, individual you know in oneself you know it exists in oneself these things now uh, the uh, next five circumstantial advantages Uh, Buddha uh, manifested and appeared. You know, so that is first. So that is external. You know, Buddha is not uh, yourself. You know, it is from external conditions. <coughs> Buddha just uh, appear or just you know uh, attain enlightenment is not enough for us. You know, it is of not much use. But Buddha not only that, but taught the Dharma. You know, so Buddha manifested the Dharma. So taught the Dharma. That's the second. <coughs> Then the third is his teaching uh, is alive today. you know which means the lineage is alive you know whatever he taught uh, today from uh, from his from buddha to his student to his to, you know to their student to right till uh, here you know so the lineage his teaching carries on alive so through that teaching we exactly know what buddha taught how buddha attained enlightenment so we exactly know how to attain enlightenment you know by following what buddha have followed so we exactly know that you know so that is the lineage if the lineage not there even if the buddha is there even if he taught the dharma if we don't know how to uh, learn the dharma how to practice the dharma then we will not be able to attain enlightenment but that is not the case you know the lineage very much alive the teaching very much alive and then the fourth is and uh, that dharma uh, can be uh, you know uh, followed and then uh, the fifth is uh, there are those who are kind 
hearted towards others. You know, those who, for example, uh, those who practice the Dharma and who are there through their loving kindness, compassion, you know, uh, uh, practice themselves with great diligence and then through their practice, uh, you know, in order to benefit beings, then manifest the Dharma so that we benefit beings, you know, so uh, so that is the fifth. So these are the uh, ten, uh, again, you know, uh, conditions, external and self, uh, you know, uh, conditions. Uh, so, uh, so all these conditions, if we examine, uh, we have all these conditions. And uh, so, if we carefully examine and see all these conditions in us, then uh, it is a precious human life. It is not just an ordinary human life. So here it says, a human as a human life also, you know, most of the uh, ordinary human life are automatically, you know, more inclined towards, uh, uh, you know, uh, activities which are not so meaningful than uh, activities which are meaningful, you know, meaningful in true sense. So we by now know what is true sense meaningful, right? So not just, uh, you know, kind of temporary uh, benefit which one experiences at the cost of others, you know, so not that kind of uh, benefits. So in that terms, uh, you know, a, a human life which, ha you know, which uh, recognizes a meaningful uh, you know the what is a meaningful uh, life, and uh, how to achieve the right you know meaningful result. So, a human life which has that capability is very little, you know, very not much at all. You know, it's very uh, small amount of it. You know, in in general, uh, you know this. Uh, if we consider uh, you know the number of animals and number of humans. Uh, human is much less than uh, animals. You know, if you just look at the different creatures in the uh, in, in the sea, you know, you can watch in the TV. You know, so many, you know, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of different creatures are there. You know, then uh, then forget that. You know, even on our own body, you know, that uh, how many germs are there? You know, how many? Uh, uh, so even in you know, uh, let's say in the morning when you brush your teeth, you know, how many germs? Uh, we are uh, doing away with you know it's millions of germs you know so in that terms then uh, human life is so you know so little you know, so in terms of that then uh, out of that kind of human life also then you know truly a human life which has these qualities the previous qualities is just you know uh, you can count them you know how many you know, so little you know in this entire uh, city how many of you are here you know, so like that, you know, so just a handful of you, you know, we can literally count, you know, so like that, you know, so, so that we, now we can see, you know, how limited, how precious it is, you know, who really have this quality of the, you know, the precious human life. There are so many out there who are busy, you know, if, uh, if we saw, you know, the football World Cup matches, you know, every World Cup match in the stadium, there were 40, 50,000 people watching the match. You know, so, uh, well as here, listening to the Dharma, how many of us are here? You know, so like that, you know, so just human life is not enough. You know, a precious human life is so rare. I'm not saying it's no good watching football, you know, I also watch, you know, so, but then uh, football matches, football match, you know, 90 minutes of play and over, you know, and then uh, some cry, some jump and happiness, and then after some time that is over, you know, then it's forgotten, you know, and then it's of not much use, you know. So now, uh, so, uh, you know, and then we also know that, you know, this human life is also very fragile, you know, it's, uh, uh, we cannot take for granted, you know, because uh, we know this very well. That's why we have life insurance nowadays, isn't it? I think most of people have life insurance. You know, we uh, we put in some amount of uh, uh, savings every I don't know what every month or every year. You know, so that uh, if anything happens suddenly, you have insurance for your life, isn't it? So of course I don't have that, but uh, most of the people have it. You know, for safety. You know, to ensure that if anything happens suddenly. They you know they have something to take care of them in the 
uh, you know, to pay for their medical expenses. You know, so most of them have this, I think. So that is, uh, you know, somehow, uh, you know, we recognize, you know, the uh, impermanence of this life. You know, so that is why uh, we uh, we have that, you know. Yeah. Here in the West, people don't have this. You have, right? Yeah. The, the more difficult it becomes when you become older, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they are more expensive. The younger you are, the less expensive they are, you know. So people also play with this, you know, and uh, it's become a business, you know. So, so yeah, so that is a fact, you know. So uh, this uh, precious human life is so precious, you know, yet it is so fragile. You know, and then, uh, uh, you know, we never know, you know, what might happen. And we never know how, you know, how, uh, you know, what situation might come across, you know, and what kind of situation might come across, you know. So, uh, you know, all that we don't know, you know. So, uh, so right now, when we have everything, you know, when we are alive, when everything is good right now, we must make use of this moment, you know. Every moment is precious for us. You know, we must make full use of what uh, the moment that we have in hand. You know, so uh, that is why, uh, you know, try and make this life meaningful is very important. You know, because uh, if we are able to make this very moment meaningful, then, uh, you know, our life is meaningful. You know, so we cannot expect to make, think that we will make tomorrow meaningful. You know, today just, uh, you know, let it be. You know, so tomorrow we don't know, you know, when is tomorrow. You know, but we know right now. You know, so if we make right now meaningful, then tomorrow also, you know, when it comes, it will be meaningful. Because of this, as I said, cause and condition. Because of this cause and condition created in this moment, you know, the meaningful cause and condition will lead to a meaningful tomorrow. You know, so therefore, uh, you know, we have to uh, try and make every moment meaningful, recognizing these qualities that we have. It's so precious. So, uh, so that way, and then even if we can try to improve, you know, one percent of what we are, you know, then that is a, a I think, a very good achievement. You know, so, uh, so that way, gradually, you know, every uh, every percent, you know, we move, you know, towards better being a better human being. So that is important. That is real dharma. You know, so dharma should be. One must understand dharma as that. Now here it says, you know, there are two kind of uh, uh, practitioner or people, uh, you know, who uh, it categorizes. So it says, uh, one kind is uh, such that uh, who have, you know, uh, uh, who have, uh, in English, uh, what do you say? you know, who have less uh, ability of, you know, insight or who has insight, limited insight, you know, so, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, who is easily led astray by companions and is frightened by profound teachings, you know, very uh, high, uh, you know, deep teachings and uh, will develop, uh, you know, and uh, such beings develop gradually. You know, so straight away cannot uh, understand a very, uh, you know, high uh, teachings or, you know, complicated teachings. You know, and then uh, uh, easy to get, you know, kind of uh, uh, mis, uh, you know, misunderstood and like this. You know, so, uh, and then, uh, but gradually uh, through skillful, uh, you know, uh, introduction, uh, then uh, gradually will uh, understand and through gradual practice, you know, step by step, uh, gradually practicing, then one will be able to, uh, you know, uh, take in or fathom the, uh, you know, uh, teachings and uh, the practice. One will be able to develop practice step by step this way, you know. So uh, and uh, through uh, accumulation of merit, you know, so uh, one will be able to develop that, you know. So that is a. Uh, uh, one kind of uh, being, and this is you know, the most common. You know, most of us are of this capability. Then there are some uh, who, you know, from the beginning itself, have great insight into the uh, teaching. You know, you just have to, uh, you know, uh, mention, and then they straight away uh, connect to it or straight away 
understand it. And then not only understand, but straight away can uh, get the, uh, you know, kind of uh, 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 the insight into that. And uh, uh, also all the time, you know, one thinks of the Dharma. You know, and then uh, these kind of, uh, you know, so these come through again, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, in our previous lifetimes, lots of uh, practice, lots of connection, and then such things happen. And then some beings are this capable. You know, so like uh, uh, some of the, uh, if you see the history, you know, the history, some of the great masters, right from, you know, child, uh, you know, they were uh, able to, uh, you know, practice and fathom the practice, deep practice, you know, right from the age of like uh, uh, 10, uh, 12, 8, they were already able to uh, teach the Dharma. They were able to, you know, uh, have certain realizations. You know, they were able to do all this, you know. So, uh, such capable beings are, you know, there are some who are of such capable beings also. So, basically, there are, uh, you know, two, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, beings of such capability. But uh, most of us are of the first capable, you know, so so we have to gradually, uh, you know, kind of re learn, uh, practice, and then uh, cut through, you know, so uh, that is how most of us are, you know, so, uh, so with that then we have to reflect on all these qualities, and then uh, have, you know, so if we reflect on these qualities of our you know, life, then we will have the confidence that we have this capability, you know, we can achieve, uh, you know, uh, what we are looking for, because we have the uh, ability, you know, so, uh, for example, uh, if you need to, uh, you know, uh, drive, say, uh, 300 kilometers an hour, you know, you cannot uh, have a, uh, you know, a small, these uh, city, uh, how to say, the everyday commuting cars, you know, the small ones, and then expect to go 300 kilometers, right? That is uh, because you don't have the conditions for that. But then if you uh, want to go 300 kilometers, you need a Formula One car. If you have a Formula One car, you can go 300 plus kilometers, you know, so because you have those conditions, you know, you have that capability, you know, so uh, to recognize that you have that capability so that you can go that much. So it is important to know. You have a Formula One car, but you don't recognize that it can go that much and you only go on, you know, uh, uh, say uh, uh, 60 or 70 kilometers and never go up, then it is, you know, uh, it is no use having a Formula car, you know, so like this, you know. So we have to first recognize what we have, you know, so that we will have the uh, confidence and we will have the motivation to go, you know, uh, what it is capable of. You know, so therefore, it is important to know what we have in hand. You know, and it did not come about just like that, as I said. You know, it came about with great uh, accumulation of merit, uh, with our own, you know, uh, creating the perfect cause and conditions to have such capability. You know, so we have this. You know, so if we recognize this, then we will not waste it. You know, we will uh, we will appreciate and then make the best out of it. You know, so therefore to recognize this is very important. So the first uh, uh, condition or the first uh, uh, reminder is to you know to always reflect on this. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, what we have. You know, so the capability that we have. So it is very important. So again and again, if we. Uh, so tomorrow we will do little meditation on this. Uh, so uh, through such meditation, through such uh, reflection, then we will be able to uh, develop uh, you know, genuine uh, appreciation and genuine confidence in what we have so that we will not waste it. You know, we will make best out of it. We will make it meaningful. You know, so that is uh, the first. So we stop here for today. And then we will continue tomorrow. And we just also, how can you do this one month? Yeah. And we do dedication. Page number 22. Oh, <laughs> 
Sama ya sadu, 